Hi there, it's David Williams again from Okanagan College, and today I want to talk about representing other things with bits. And so far we know how to represent numbers using bits, and now I want to enhance that and talk about representing other things using bits. And what we see here in this, in this slide is an ASCII code chart. And I'll get into a little bit more about ASCII, but it's basically a way of using bits to represent characters. Now, before we go into more details about ASCII, let's let's look at this, draw a cartoon representation. Let's use black here instead of red. Um, cartoon representation of a, a simple computer system. So right here we've got some memory. That's where all of our bits are stored. And without the rest of the computer system, without the CPU, central processing unit, and without all of the inputs and outputs, that memory is, is pretty useless. So we have to have this flow of information from the inputs and outputs to the CPU, so this is going to be in the form of bits, and we're also going to have to have this flow of, of bits between the CPU and the memory. Now if we were to zoom in just on the memory, and actually if we were to just to disconnect the memory from the rest of the CPU. And, and let's say we were able to look into the memory and look at a little block in the memory and able to actually look at the value of the bits in, in memory. So each one of these, each one of these um, little boxes here is, is an address in memory. And in each one of these memories, let's say there's eight bits. Now, and, and just continue on. All, all these blocks of memory are filled with bits. Now, without any context, all those bits are are just bits. They don't have any meaning. Now, we can we could convert those bits into decimal form, but it doesn't. But those bits are not necessarily representing a decimal number. I mean, they could be representing anything. They could be representing a program. They could be representing an image or an audio file or a video. Or it could be could be data within a Word document, you know. The, the list goes on and on. They could be representing anything. The thing that I want to focus on that these these bits could be representing is ASCII, and our ASCII, A S C I I, stands for the American Standard Code for Information Interchange, and this this ASCII code, which is just a code using numbers or bits to represent characters was actually developed in the 1960s and it's still sort of in use today in character encoding on um, on the internet uh, it uses a more advanced version of, of ASCII or more advanced version of character encoding called UTF um, UTF-8 being the, the most common one which is actually backwards compatible with ASCII so let's look at what ASCII is, and in particular, what do the numbers represent? And what characters does each one of these numbers represent? Now, ASCII, the original ASCII is a seven bit is a, is a seven bit encoding mechanism, encode, character encoding mechanism. And what we're looking at here is the full seven bit ASCII table, starting with the num number zero, going all the way up to the number 127. So what we see in this table here is we've got the decimal row, a hexadecimal row, and an, oct and an octal row. So these are all just numbers in three different forms. And then in red is the character that that number represents. So for example, the character capital D over here is represented by the decimal number 68, or the, which is equal to the hexadecimal number 44, which is equal to the octal number 104. And the way that this would work is, it, let's say that we were trying to type out, or we were typing out onto a, onto a computer, we're typing out a little phrase, let's say good day. So we type, we type good day into, into, our, key, into our computer. And this is going to, if, if this was an, an ASCII um, character encoding, uh, if our computer was, was uh, encoding characters in, in ASCII form, each one of these characters would, would take on the ASCII code when it was stored in memory. So if we go back to the ASCII table and look at what good day looks like, we could look at, we find the first character G, which is represented by the decimal number 71 or the hexadecimal 47. And then lowercase o over here is represented by 6F. 
and then another 6f for the second O, and then lowercase d is 64. And then we would have a space, spaces over here, hex decimal 20, capital D is hex decimal 44, A is hex decimal 61, and lowercase y is hex decimal 79. So in, in memory, this, if this good day was encoded in memory, we might have this block of memory here. Let's say this was 8-bit memory, so each of these locations in memory stored 8 bits of data. So the first, the first block in memory would, uh, I'm going to write this in, in uh, hexadecimal form. The G would be represented by the hexadecimal number 47. The O would be represented by the hexadecimal 6F. And I'm using 0X just to designate that I'm writing hexadecimal. I could do 47 with a lowercase h or, or a, an h or a, or a lower 16 there, but I'm, I'm just going to use this. This is, this is a C programming standard. So G, O, 6F to represent the second O. Capital D is represented by 65 hex. So what have we got so far? We've got G, lowercase o, lowercase o, lowercase d. And then we've got a space, oops, a space which is hexadecimal 20, capital D which is cap hexadecimal 44, lowercase a which is hexadecimal 67, and lowercase y which is hexadecimal 79. So if we were just to look at the memory and we saw these numbers in here, we wouldn't know what those numbers meant unless it was within the context of, of knowing that these are ASCII characters. So then we can translate those into the ASCII characters that they are. Now going the other way, let's say that we had in memory Let's do a simple one. We'll just do three, three characters. So we had the number 42 hex, and the number 79 hex, and the number 65 hex. Now just knowing, knowing that these are ASCII characters, we can then go to the ASCII table and look up 42, which is a capital B. So that 42 represents the capital B. The 79 represents the lowercase y. And the 65 represents lowercase e. So only by knowing what the context is for these bits can we then figure out what those bits actually mean. And hopefully that helps you understand a little bit more about representing other thing with things with bits and most specifically how, how ASCII works. And if you have any questions, you can bring them to your instructor.